What's going on? Are we going strong? She fell at rest in her head. My shoulder was the perfect high. We fit so right. So what's going on? Cause I've been undone. The long drive, the coastline. Looking out of first light. Am I still on her mind? I've been undone. Um, welcome everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Terrence Woodson. I am one of the events managers here at the Seattle Chamber of Commerce, and I'd like to welcome all of you to our fourth annual Elevate Northwest Conference, Small Business, Big Picture, and to our session today, How to Build Your Support Team. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank our featured sponsors, Advanced Professionals, Business Health Trust, and Premira. I would also like to thank our event sponsors, Amazon, BECU, GeekWire, Reach King County, and Recology. Um, finally, I would like to thank our small business champions, Boeing and Symmetra. So before we begin, a few um, webinar logistics. Um, be sure that your microphone is on mute. If you need technical assistance, just use the chat box and one of my colleagues will assist you. And then finally, if you have a question for our great panel, please use, please put your question in the Q&A box and our panelists will answer the questions. Our panel will speak for about 20 to 25 minutes, then we'll have about 10 minutes of Q&A. Now, before I begin, um, I would like to thank, I would like to introduce um, Jen Evanson, she is a director of member benefits at Business Health Trust. Business Health Trust is one of our featured sponsors. Jen, feel free to unmute yourself and turn on your video. Uh, hi, uh, this is Jen. Let me um, turn my video on real quick. There we go. Um, thank you for the chance to meet with you guys today. I'm the Director of Member Benefits with Business Health Trust. Um, we're a source uh, for employee benefits. We serve companies of all sizes, giving them a choice and access for great insurance options. Um, we work with carriers like Primera Blue Cross, Kaiser Permanente, and we like to bring robust benefits so that your employees can take care of their or so your employers can take care of their employees at a reasonable cost. Um, one of the questions that I get frequently is, how can I benchmark my benefits every year? So you need to ask your insurance broker to include BHT. Um, we're happy to provide you quotes as well if you reach out to us. Um, but it's good for you to just reach out every once in a while, um, at least once a year to just see what, um, what is out there for insurance, whether it's BHT or whomever, but it's best to just um, benchmark those benefits every year. Uh, we are dedicated to helping employers through this pandemic. We've been providing PPE, hand sanitizer, and um, bringing vaccines to communities all over Washington. Our core value is to be a resource to businesses and business owners and operators 
And the pandemic has been a great way for us to prove that um, we have our employees back and our employers back. Um, so please reach out to us if you have any questions. We are um, here to help in any way we can. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you, Jen. And thanks to uh, Business Health Trust for being a continued supporter of our conference. Um, now I would like to introduce our um, moderator for today's discussion, uh, Jose Vasquez. Um, Jose is the Director of Programs for a Venture Nonprofit, a Seattle-based organization that empowers aspiring entrepreneurs with limited resources and unlimited potential. I really love that. I really love that sentence. Uh, he develops and oversees a strategic vision of ventures business development services, including business training, coaching, and incubation programs. Born and raised in a small town in Zacatecas, Mexico, Jose and his family migrated to Kansas City, Missouri. Overcoming cultural and language barriers, Jose was, uh, was able to continue his educational journey, field a BA in pre-medical studies, and an MA in Educational Administration, Higher Education from the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Prior to working at Ventures, Jose worked in the nonprofit and education sectors for over 10 years. Most recently, Jose was the director of after-school programs at the Little School in Bellevue. He also worked at Seattle University, University of Washington, University of Illinois, and Dartmouth College. Jose is an active member in the community and his passion for education drives his need to help others, especially BIPOC and LGBTQIA communities. After moving to Seattle from Chicago, he started looking for ways to help underrepresented communities. He joined the board of directors at Entre Hermanos, where he has served as president and vice president. And he also serves as diversity and inclusion director for the Emerald City Softball Association and general manager for the Varsity Gay League Seattle. Jose, feel free to turn on your video and unmute yourself. Well, thank you for that uh, entrance, Terrence, and uh, good morning to everyone. Um, so uh, now I'm gonna introduce our panelists who are here with us today. First, we have Lisa Hoffer. Lisa is the founder and CEO of Kirkland-based Simplicity Consulting, the innovative enterprise marketing services consultancy that helps companies like Microsoft, Amazon, and Tableau operationalize their marketing programs at speed and scale. Founded in 2006, Simplicity's mission has always been to help everyone thrive in the new world of work and is recognized as as an Inc. Magazine 5,000 fastest growing private company for five consecutive years. Simplicity, Simplicity Consulting is, is also one of Puget Sound Business Journal's largest woman-owned business in the Washington state. Lisa has been named an Inc. Magazine top 10 female entrepreneur and selected as, as an Earn and Young entrepreneurial winning woman. She's a champion for professionals transitioning into consulting and advises companies on building flexible project-based teams that add immediate value as discussed in her three books. The first one, work your way, reinvent yourself, create the life you want and thrive as a consultant. The second one, navigating the talent shift, how to build on-demand teams that drive innovation, control costs and get results. And finally, personal brand, personal brand playbook. At this time, Lisa, you already have your camera on. And I'm moving on to present the next, uh, our, our next uh, panelist, which is Jennifer Ness Stalker. We are very excited to have Jennifer Ness Stalker MBA as a panelist. She is an award-winning coach, visionary, educator, author, and speaker. Jennifer Ness was recently recognized by the Washington State University as the 2021 MLK Junior Distinguished Service Award recipient for displaying altruism and being dedicated to the community. She believes that having a squad or support team is one of the most important assets she possesses in life and will share that with us today. When Jennifer Ness noticed that she was 
spiraling out of control and couldn't manage her work life and business, she developed her squad. Her squad consists of a therapist, sponsor, mentor, coach, and advisor. While they each play a cr critical role in her success, they also have distinct responsibilities in ensuring she is accountable to results. With the help of her squad, she, con she continues to set daily strategic goals and experience enhanced time management and pure joy continuously. In turn, Jennifer Ness became a coach, sponsor, mentor, and advisor for others. She has been uh, assisting numerous business owners with navigating the available resources and interpreting the ever evolving framework of funding. As a certified business advisor with the Washington Small Business Development Center, Jennifer Ness has assisted many business owners in overcoming barriers and crushing their goals during these pandemics. So at this point, you already have your camera on and both of you feel free to unmute yourselves. All right, so we're all here together and let's get to the question. So the first one is for you, Lisa. Can you give us a quick description of the role of a business coach? It's a great question. Well, welcome. Hi, everybody. Happy to be here. Excited for this conversation, Jose and Jenna Finesse. Um, I'm also going to be taking notes as well because I know there's going to be a lot to learn from both of you and our audience. You know, when I think about uh, my journey, 15 years owning a company now, and what does a business coach mean? There's been different points at different times in any business life cycle where I needed different kinds of support. So when I think to the early days, a business coach, I hired a business coach to really help me understand what was my mission? What was I trying to create? I had an idea. And so there's a lot of awareness, I would call the awareness building of myself. I took notes, personality tests. And so when I think about a coach, they're really a great, they can be kind of almost a great mirror for you, asking you the right questions that, you know, you sometimes just need someone to ask and then you say it. And I believe coaches inherently know you have the answers within you and their job is to ask powerful questions to pull, to pull it out of you versus like an advisor might be more someone really to have specific expertise and advice that you don't know, you need advice. And you need those people too, right? But when I think about a coach, sometimes people can be a blend of a coach and an advisor. <clears throat> Coaching is really about helping you uncover within yourself what it is you're trying to create as a business owner. And then that evolves from like a, a solo entrepreneur to hiring your first employees, to managing those, building your team, scaling your business, those are different leadership skills that you might need different coaches. So I've kind of come back to different types of coaches throughout my journey, kind of depending on where I'm feeling like I need to, to grow and develop within myself. Thank you for that uh, answer. And Jennifer Ness, the next question is for you. Can you give us a quick description of the role of a mentor? So we all know that um, coach, mentor, advisor, consultant, uh, friend, associate, connection, we know that these terms are just so intertwined and also they're used so frequently that we like, I don't know what I have right now. <laughs> so as far as a mentor, um, this reminds me, uh, I know you probably read this book, but way back in the day, I remember I lived in um, Connecticut at the time, I read uh, Sheryl Sandberg's book, Lean In. And there's a whole chapter on mentorship. And I don't remember everything in the chapter, but I do remember a couple of things. And she used a story about um, a chicken or a bird or something I kept following and saying, will you be my mentor? Will you be my mentor? I don't remember exactly. But that's what comes to mind when you ask me that question, because we oftentimes think about a mentor as the person who has it all and you learn from. But really, mentorship should be mutually beneficial. Like most of the folks that have, um, quote unquote, made it and are at a different phase or a different step than you are, they want to give back to you. But that also helps them because they they get to share their expertise and 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 have somebody who's really interested. And I'm a mentor for a few folks. And I'll say this. 
it makes me feel good when they quote me, when they follow the things that I tell them to do, or when they say things like, oh my goodness, the, the light bulb just went off and things like that. But a, a mentorship should be a mutually beneficial relationship where both parties gain. So yes, there's the mentee, right? The person who may be a little less experienced or less knowledgeable. And then there's a mentor, the person who have done some things that you possibly want to do. And you can find a mentor in pretty much everybody. Like some of my mentors right now, currently, I think about one of my mentors is Lewis Rudd. He's one of the co-founders of eSales Chicken. Um, sometimes he just, I'll just call him and he, and I don't want anything. Sometimes I just want to see what he's doing. Like, what do, what do people like you do on a natural day, on a real day? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, and I never even told him you're my mentor, put a title on it, but because we're still developing that relationship, but I feel good to know that I could call him at any time and ask him like, Hey, how did you go from, you know, being a sole proprietorship to now having like multiple franchises or what does that look like and so having somebody who you've developed a relationship with that's not just beneficial for you but beneficial for the both of you i think that's mentorship uh thank you both for for, for those responses you, you you are making me think right the importance of of having those two and then also you're also making me think about what if i do have that person that is both my business coach and my mentor and thinking about how can I identify like if the advice comes from you as a business coach or is coming from you as a mentor. So lots, lots of really great information. So for everybody that is watching, they're probably thinking, yes, light bulbs are, are, are going on, um, going off, I'm sorry. Um, but thank you both for that. The next question is for the both of you. Who is in your team and what role do they play in your team. Yeah, you want me to go first? All right. Uh, um, I, gosh, when I think about my team and I, and I like that work because I think it's intentionally a little vague, right? Because I think immediately about my business, like the people that work for me, right? But team, and I think Jennifer and I said this really well when you introduced her in, your team is so much broader than that. And this one is actually taking me a while to learn, right? that we all have different aspects of our lives that we need to ensure that we're checking in on, like your mental health, especially this year at the pandemic, right? So whether that's a therapist or a counselor, even a really good friend, how are you, how are you as that leader really helping yourself fill that space? I know through the years when I've sought support in that area, it's really helped just kind of remove a lot of obstacles in my life. And when I've gone away from it, it's created more. So I think it's that mental health piece of when I think about your team, what are you doing for yourself? Um, and for, for many of us, especially I see this with women, we feel guilty to take a moment for ourselves. This, you know, the idea of self-care. Uh, I like that term, but I feel like for a lot of women, we think we have to take care of everybody else first. And we all know that it's like the airplane, you know, you got to put the mask on yourself first. And I'm saying this to myself too, as I have two, two teenage boys and a whole life and a whole bunch of people you know, sometimes I'm not so good at that. And I, and I have to check in with myself to make sure that I'm taking care of myself before you think about the broader team. So when you think about the team, I think about there's specific advisors, there's people over the years that I've set out advice. And this is when you have to really, I've learned, do your due diligence. You know, one of the mistakes I made early on was I really took everyone's advice and I wasn't very discerning about who I was listening to. And, you know, when you run a business, one thing I've learned is everyone's got a lot of advice for you. Um, and, you know, I think the first thing is, have they done it? Do they understand really what you're going through? Should you be listening to them? And really just putting up that radar because everyone can, it's easy to just talk and give advice. It's a whole nother thing for you to implement and do it. And then really thinking about your priorities. So advisors are really important. And where is it that you're feeling the pain right now, whether it's sales or operations or finance or so many areas of your business and how do you find those resources that can truly add value from an area maybe you're not super strong in and um, how do you know the right questions to ask of people um, where that might be a gap for you. So when you think about advice, you think about coaching from leadership, culture development, that's such an important piece. So I kind of look at your team overall as like yourself, you got to take care of yourself, what does that mean to you? you know, the basics, right? Drinking a lot of water, getting some exercise, getting some fresh air. 
um, you know, do, doing those things, getting sleep. We all know these things, but if, I, I find for me, if one of those is off, I'm kind of off on every other area. So that back to that self-care, that mental health component is so critical, making sure we're doing that. And if you need an accountability coach, a trainer, a counselor, whatever that looks like for you, get that in your life. Um, so that it'll help you stay on track to make the right decisions for the right advisors. And then of course your team with coaches, if there's so many different kinds of coaches. I also joined um, several different CEO coaching groups over the years. I started with entrepreneurs organization. I grew to, to YPO um, there's Vistage. There's this organization here with the chamber. Um, there's so many great ways to tap into your peer network. So it could be in a group setting, you could be in a one-on-one -on -one setting. So it's back to kind of what works for you and I, what for, for you right now. Uh, sometimes you have the time, sometimes you don't. Sometimes I just wanna reach out to a specific coach for a few sessions to kind of help me get back on track. Sometimes I want more of a group setting. So just knowing that you have a lot of options and thinking about when you think about your team, like what does that mean for you right now? It doesn't have to be forever. But right now, what, what is it that you really need to build that's going to help you and get to that next level? I like that. I would a thousand percent agree with Lisa. Um, one thing that I think society has taught us is that self-care is selfish. And one thing I would add to what you just said is that self-care is sanity. It's not vanity. It's not selfish. It's necessary. And so we're taking care of everybody else and then putting ourselves last, then really that's low self-esteem. <laughs> Cause I don't love nobody more than I love me, okay? And I have two beautiful children and I love them, but I can't take care of them if I don't take care of me. So if I don't leave you guys with nothing else, self-care is sanity. That is not selfish, it's not vanity. It is the way that we take care of ourselves. And so when I think about my team or my squad, hashtag squad goes, <laughs> One of the folks that's in my squad is my therapist, okay? So there is nobody that I can talk to the way that I talk to her, okay? There's nobody that understands my mental psyche the way that she does. And so I know that there is cliche about, you know, certain folks don't do therapy or this or that, but those are the main folks that need it. And I'm one of them. <laughs> So a part of my squad, I have an advisor, I have a leadership coach, and I really value her. Um, she does for me what nobody can do. Like she really challenges me. Like in the way that she talks to me makes me want to just like come up to cool. Like, wait, what? Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. You know, she asks me certain questions that pulls certain things out of me. I also have a business coach. I have a mentor, um, several mentors. And these roles are not just for one individual. And I believe Lisa said this, but I, I like to reiterate that there's certain seasons, seasonality to these relationships, right? So I may need a certain coach at the beginning of the year because I'm doing a lot of planning, right? I'm doing a lot of strategic focus on my life, my business, my family, and the things that I want to put together. So I might not meet with them every month or every week, right? But I need to meet with them at certain times of the year. So there's seasonality to these different relationships. And also there's levels to it. There's depth to the relationship. So I may not know my, 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 my business coach may not ever come to my home, right? Or I may not ever come to her home, but my mentor, that's somebody I like to have dinner with, you know, at least once a month or twice a month or whatever. So there's levels to it. There's seasonality to it. And that's okay. Everybody has a place on your squad. Everybody has a place on your team. So you just need to identify that, set those expectations and those goals and just be mindful of it. Um, so that's what I would add because Lisa just really encompassed everybody that's on my squad. <laughs> No, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, as you as you keep talking about all these different people that that encompasses in your team or com community of support, um, you know, you 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 also uh, made me think about um, how my team has transitioned. Uh, you know, for me, going into education when I used to work with little little ones, um, you know, pre K kids. So I have my, my level of support. I'm like, how do I do this? And then eventually working with, with college students, completely different, how do I do this? So 
Uh, and then now, now in the nonprofit working with entrepreneurs and, and small businesses, um, I have noticed that uh, my team has shifted along the way with my transition in, in, in different careers, but that there's some that they're, that they're constant. Kind of like what you were talking, Jennifer Ness, um, you know, like there's, there's that, that one mentor that the moment that I switch from, from, from one area of education to another, he's been there with me throughout, no, ma no matter what I do. Um, and the other ones that just keep on shifting because I, I'm in a different stage of my life and my trajectory and, and whatnot. So thank you both for, for, for that, for the, for that um, answer. Um, Cause you, now you're making me think. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. You better think Jose. <laughs> You know, thinking about and also thinking about that we do have members of our teams that we don't think of uh, about them as members of our team, but they are. That and that includes family, right? Yeah, it so, so includes family. Sometimes I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you just made me think about something too. Sometimes we we discount relationships until they're no longer there. For example, I had this lady that passed away a couple weeks ago. Well, it's probably been a month now, sorry, but it just, it feels like yesterday. Um, and she was one of my very first friends here in Washington. I've been here for a little over two years. And she taught me so much about golf. I started um, playing golf a year ago and I'll go out with her and she would always teach me something. And um, when she passed away, it just really hit me. I didn't. I thought of her as a friend or part of my squad, right? But it was like, I didn't realize the impact that she had. And it was like, no, I haven't long, known her for a long time. And I've never been to her home. She's never been to mine. But I kind of almost always thought that she would be there when I need her, right? So just, just um, maximizing the moments that you get to spend with folks, because we never know when it's our last time or or when that relationship dynamic will change. Because we all, as individuals, we have things that come up in our lives, right? So we may not have a lot of time over here, but while we're spending that time, maximize those moments, because we never know when they may be lost. Uh, uh, and that's actually a good transition to our next question for the both of you. Tell us a story of how you recruited someone to be in your team. Yeah. That, um... I love what you just said, Jennifer S, because you, you know, when one of the things we touched on was relation. This really is about relationships when we talk about your team, right? And and there's different levels of relationships. And and you know, the older I get, the more I realize like the world is just one big circle, really. I mean, not just actually a circle, but metaphorically, because sometimes relationships come back around even 20 years down the road that you would have never thought in kind of a unique and different way. And so it really is about relationships, right? And, and, and acting with integrity and doing the right thing, um, which, is, which is fun. That is a fun part, I think, of, of getting older and meeting more people and kind of seeing the dots connect a little more. You know, when I think about someone I've recruited, um, there's been, you know, it's interesting when I think about my path and kind of where I'm going next, I, I think I've been very, organic in the way that I've recruited. I've never really sat down, like I have some friends that are business owners that have really intentionally put down a list of people that are going to go get on their board of advisors or going to go get on their team. And uh, I've never been that deliberate. Maybe that's some learning for me, but I've been opportunistic around thinking about what are the areas that I want to challenge myself. And then there was one woman, I was at a conference actually, this is kind of a unique way to think about recruiting someone. Um, I was at a conference several years ago. I decided to put myself, I like to sometimes put myself in situations really I have no business being in, just put myself out of my comfort zone. Um, and so I went to this Harvard Medical Conference, gosh, it's probably 10 years ago now. Uh, and, and I'm not a doctor, I have no business being there. It's like for nurses and counselors, but they were talking about, this was just when coaching was coming on the scene with businesses and how it all integrated into mental health. And there are some amazing speakers. I just wanted to listen and learn and take it all in. And I ended up sitting next to a woman who uh, was a five-time author. She was like this rock star doctor. She was a doctor. She was like, she's like a force of nature. And we had to do an exercise as part of this breakout. And we got to know each other. And she said, you know, I, I coach women entrepreneurs too. And I, and I was a little intimidated by her. Uh, but I thought, okay, this is a good growth area for me, you know? So she's like, do you want, you know, do you want to talk, do you want to like keep talking after this event? 
And I said, sure. And I really didn't think much of it that maybe we'd have one or two talks. We ended up talking for f over five years, like sometimes every month, sometimes every quarter, it kind of fl fluctuated. And I was very intentional when I talked to her because she's someone who I felt was like way out of my league. Like she, I felt I, she was up here, you know? And so when I talked to her, I really felt like I had to get everything together. What do I want from her? She was also <laughs> in a completely different industry than me, which really was great from a sounding board because I would talk, you know, when you talk to people who know your business, well, you're just kind of kind of hear the same thing. And so I talked to her about my problems and she gave me a completely different perspective. So I really valued that that, you know, that her feedback, I still value her and her feedback along the way. And also she's very direct with me, which I appreciate. Like sometimes a little jarring direct of like, what are you doing? Stop that. And like most people may, might not be like that. And I, I always think for me personally, it's good to have one person that, you know, is just going to like call you out or hold you <laughs> accountable. Right. And, and really for me, at least that works, not everybody all the time. Um, but so, so that was someone with intention who was really different from, I think someone I would normally bring into my team that, that I, that really, I intentionally, I guess, kept recruiting her and working with her that I really felt like helped me develop as a leader. I love that. Um, one story in particular, I think I told y'all a few minutes ago that I just, uh, moved to Seattle. I mean, it's been two and a half years, but it feels like just, <laughs> and so one of the things that I definitely noticed was that Seattle freezed. I came here for a job. I didn't um, have any family or friends. And um, I did have my child, my daughter, but it was just like, you know, I was getting to the point where I was almost ready to go back home. <laughs> and so um, two, two stories. The first one is um, I was reading, I love to read, but I was reading the Seattle Times and there was this article in there this beautiful black woman. And she, the article was entitled navigating um, leadership amongst with race or it had something to do with race and navigator leadership or something. And she was beautiful. And so I looked her up on LinkedIn. I like hurry up and looked her up on LinkedIn. <laughs> and then I was like, Hey, uh, I read your article. Um, I don't, I want to say I asked her, will you be my friend? I don't know what I asked her, but I was like, can we have tea? Cause I love tea too. And she was like, absolutely. And so she's a professor at Seattle U. She's a public speaker. She's um, an author. Like she just, you know, doing it. And it's like, I can see myself in her and I love seeing somebody that look like me. I don't know about y'all, but when I see somebody that look like me, I'm automatically attracted. Like, okay, I need a friend. But, uh, and not that all my friends look like me, but that was just one of those instances where I was like, oh my God. And so we have been connected ever since. Like, um, sh I think she leans on me as a coach and as a mentor. I lean on her as a coach and as a mentor. We meet at least once a week. Um, we talk on the phone, we text. She's been in my house. Like that type of relationship has been phenomenal. Another instance where I recruited so I told you guys I started playing golf recently. Um, and so when I first started playing golf, I didn't see anybody, any, I didn't see a lot of women out there, period. But I definitely didn't see a lot of black women. And so I started this Facebook group. And originally it was called Women of Color in Golf. And it grew, it was probably like, you know, 20, 25 people. And then other women started joining. It wasn't just women of color. So I was like, let me take that off. Let me make everybody feel inclusive. So now it's called Seattle Women in Golf. And there's over 200 members in there. And we are just learning how to golf together. We, you know, we do like a hit and sip where we go to the golf range and hit balls. We do a putt and sip. But it was just my way of recruiting women. And I found some of the absolute best friends in there. And um, so that's how I'm really intentional about who I reach out to. I'm also very intentional about who I let in my space because I, as y'all can see, I'm a very high energy person, but I'm also a very positive and optimistic person. And I don't do well with folks who are pessimistic or try to bring down my energy levels. So I'm like, oh no, deuces. But um, I'm very intentional about reaching out to folks who I feel like I could benefit from or could benefit from me because it's not just about me. It's also about how can I help them? How can I help them on their growth journey? So very intentional in that way and um, purposeful, so. 
Oh my God, thank you for the stories. Um, so we have two more questions left before our time together. Uh, the next question is, what are some things that attendees should consider when planning to build their team? Mm -hmm. well, um, I'll, 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 yes, thank you. Yeah. One of the things that I think you need to consider is not just what you need how you can be a benefit to the other person. Because here's the thing, everybody in their mommy and papa and grandpapa <laughs> comes at situations like, what can I get from it? But if you can come at the situation asking, you know, what is it that I can give? Because we all have so many gifts in us. I tell my clients all the time, you're probably at least one or two or maybe possibly even three steps ahead of someone else, right? That could turn into a consulting relationship. That could just turn into a, hey, oh, you're looking to, you're looking at what business entity you should, you should choose. Hmm, here's the one I chose and why, right? It could be something as simple as that, but always look for what you can bring to the relationship and not always what the other person can bring for you right so that would be my first piece of advice just just take inventory of your of your positive attributes of your blessings right of your um strengths and see if there's folks out here that probably need you in their life and i guarantee you if you do that you'll be like oh my goodness there's a lot of folks that need courage that need encouragement that mm -hmm. need peace you know, especially in this time with COVID-19. So that's one approach. Mm -hmm. I love that, Jennifer Ness. You got me thinking about energy too. And, you know, one of the things uh, that I think you're so right about what can we give and almost thinking about reciprocity. So when you think about how to build your team, the broad team, it is, it is I think the best relationships for me have been reciprocal because we all want to feel like we're, adding value and we're contributing and we're making a difference. I think it, that's kind of a core human need uh, to feel like we're seen, right? And part of that is feeling like our value and our strengths are also helping someone else as we're, we might be getting support from other people. And, and thinking about energy, this is something that has been a newer learning for me. I, and I love that you brought it up, Jennifer S, because oftentimes I think it's easy to look at people and, and look at their skills or, you know, look at how we could come together and partner, but, and we might just look at it very linearly and not take into account the energy. Cause this is back to your time. All of our time is valuable. That's the only, the only resource you can't make more of is time. So when you think about your time and the people that you're surrounding yourself with, are they lifting you up? or are they dragging you down? I mean, that sounds really negative, but I went through a period in my business where I didn't re realize this was happening. I was hiring people because they looked like they're the right on paper, but their energy was very negative. It was very toxic. And I found myself having to be that cheerleader that, come on, come on, let's just, and I could get them there. And all it was doing was just, it exhausted me, depleted oh my goodness. me, right? And yeah. every, it kind of took a while for me to go, what? No, I don't, you know, yeah. it's their choice, right? It's people's choice. It doesn't make them good or bad, it's just where everybody is. But I can choose to be around people who want to lift me up. And so I think really that energy, that reciprocal energy, when you, and you feel it when you talk to people, like, right, you feel it when you walk away from a conversation, are you like jazzed and energized? Or are you like, oh my God, I got to lie down. I'm exhausted now, right? <laughs> um, I mean, look, this what is you said, life. Lisa. Right. You Sorry. remind me of something my pastor said a while ago, which was yeah. so amazing. I'll never forget it. He said, people in your life are either armor bearers or pallbearers. Are they, are they walking you to your destiny or are they walking you to your grave? Oh, and God. so you can put folks in those categories. Like, wait a minute now, where are you walking me to? Where are we going? <laughs> right. Cause I ain't trying to go to my grave. I'm right. trying to go to my destiny. So putting folks in those categories and just identifying and, and, and even being honest about it. Cause sometimes that's those crucial conversations are necessary. Like, you know what, girl, every time I talk to you, you, you complain, what's up, what, what's going on with you? You know, how can I help you? Cause I don't like that. Like, I don't want to hear that all the time. I want to hear some good stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And so having those crucial conversations. So I thank you for bringing that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you're the one inspired. I like the crucial conversations. And I think, yeah, that's it. It's, and, and, and I think for, you know, what I, what I learned for myself is like, I'm such a helper. I want to help. And, 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 and that's great. I think women generally tend to be like wanting to help. I see this with a lot of women and, and what sometimes we do is sacrifice our own energy back to that team. So when you think about a team and I can tell you now, when I have a team like now that has amazing energy on us, like we can go do things. You just, you, it just takes, it just feels easier. I don't know how else to say it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's something that seems so obvious, but sometimes we just get ourselves in that place. And, you know, I remember reading something that said, like, you become the five people you surround yourself with. Mm-hmm. So when you think about a team and, and you know, let's just use five as an example, it could be more or less, but who are those people? Are they adding to you? Are they building you up as a leader beyond their, their, their expertise and their guidance? It, are they filling your soul really at the end of the day? Because we all want, I think we, we can all energetically kind of lift each other up. Right. And it's, and it's, up, and it's kind of up to us to be just very intentional about, um, about reciprocity. So I think that's a key piece when I think about how to build a team. Thank you for that. One more thing, Jose, I know you have other questions, but she, she just sparked something in me. One of the things that we should be mindful of is our team should not just be people that just like us. Mm. I like the fact that you said, you know, there's reciprocity, of course, but you said you went to a conference of all of these doctors and PhDs and you're like, wait, hold on. I got this imposter syndrome. What's going on? But really, we should have folks that are smarter than us. We should have folks that are wealthier than us. We should have folks that are not so much as well. So we should have be real rounded, right? When we have all of this different diversity in our relationships, it just makes us better people because we have something to aspire toward. We understand other perspectives. If you hang around folks that think like you all the time, that act like you all the time, you ain't gonna go too far. But if you hang around folks where you're like, you know what, I never looked at that that way or, Hmm, that's a different perspective, then it's like, it helps you to grow. And that's where we should always constantly be growing as individuals. So thank you for bringing that thought to my head, Lisa. Yes, totally agree. All right. So we talk about your teams. We talk about how you recruited them and how they're part of your teams. So the final question is, when you, once you have your team together, how do you keep them engaged? Mm, that's good. That's yeah. good. Um, you go first. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I was going to say um, one of the things is just constant communication, right? Mm. You have to communicate. Um, there are friends now. There are friends that I don't, I don't have to talk to every day. I can, you know, pick up. I haven't talked to them in two years. Pick up the phone. It's like we, hadn't, we haven't missed the beat, right? And that's how you know they're friends. <laughs> When you, you you can pick up the phone and be like, hey, girl, and they're like, oh, and then you're catching up. And next thing you know, an hour and 47 minutes went by. This is real life story for me. OK, I called one of my friends in uh, Charlotte the other day and I was just like, hey, what's up? We Our babies are the same age. And next thing we looked up, it was an hour and 47 minutes. It was like we hadn't missed the beat, but we had so much to catch up on. But um, so those type of relationships you know, you don't have to coddle as much, right? You don't have to kind of baby as much because it's solid. So I think in the beginning stages, right? When you're developing those relationships, you kind of really got to set expectations. Like I remember when I first got a divorce and I started dating again, I was like, don't expect to hear from me every day. That's not going to (laughs) happen. And I don't expect to hear from you every day. (laughs) So I think setting those expectations so that folks don't get offended And you remind me because I have a 15 year old and she said her friend was offended that she don't talk to her every day. She thought they weren't as cool. And my daughter was thinking, oh, we're super cool. But the girl had said something to her like, well, we don't talk no more. So I didn't know if we were still cool. And she was like, I didn't know you wanted to talk every day. Like, I'm not that girl. (laughs) So I think having those expectations and I told her, I said, baby, you gotta, you gotta set those expectations. Let her know. I don't, I don't talk on the phone every day. That's not my life. I'm not that teenager, but I think even us as adults, we just have to know, like, I don't have to talk to you every day, but when I talk to you, or even if I'm not talking to you, I'm thinking about you, 
or just shooting a little text or a little email here and there to cultivate that relationship so it doesn't go stale because they can go stale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When I think about like how to keep your team engaged, I, I, I think these, this comes down to a few questions to ask yourself and, and I don't think there's a right or a wrong. This is, this is very individual, which is think of it as like your personal board of directors and, and you get to choose how you want to meet when you want to meet. So for example, do you want some people formalize this, right? They call their advisory board you could, or you call it something else. Um, and they meet every month, they meet every quarter, they meet twice a year, they meet once a year, whatever. Again, whatever your cadence is. And if you're someone who feels like you need that accountability, that's a great way to set the agenda, invite people to be on your board and say, and, and it's very structured. And you, and you could say like, I wanted to, to, to present my strategy. I want to present my vision. I want feedback, or I'm, I want to be able to throw out a problem and have a team and a, a small group work on a problem. That's, that's one approach. Another approach, the approach that, that I've taken is, um, again, not, it's not right or wrong, it's just different, is I have a lot of individuals, I'd say, with different kinds of expertise or advisor or coach. And I kind of, over the years, have built them, and I would call them my personal board of advisors. I mean, they don't know that. We don't all get together. I thought about that, but I'm like, you know, I think it's more effective right now anyway. I, I, I reach out when I feel like I need them or they need me. Um, back to that reciprocal. And there's not a lot of structure around it. Uh, so if you're someone like that, that kind of reaches out more relationally. Um, but I but I definitely, you know, I kind of have a feeling of when it's time to connect with people and, and get some advice from them on something. And then, and then I think from an engagement standpoint, it really comes back to what you want from the relationship. You know, if it's someone in your, and there's a difference, obviously, for paying somebody like a coach or an advisor, that's a different kind of relationship, right? Then it's more of um, like a peer advisory where you're helping each other and maybe you meet every quarter for lunch or, or coffee or something like that. So I think getting clear first on how do you, how do you want to engage? What do you feel like you need? And then do you want to formalize it with a group or do you want to keep it a little more? informal and continue to build your, your personal board of advisors, you know, as you as you continue to grow and have different, different needs. Thank you. Well, thank you both uh, for the, 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 the time and the answers for the questions. We do have some time for questions from our attendees. Um, so we're gonna jump right in. Uh, so either of you, if you wanna take it, um, so the first one is how many are in your squads or teams and how often do you contact them? Um, I don't have a board of advisors, but I, I would say uh, people that I feel like are my, so um, I told you I'm a therapist. I have two business advisors. I have, I don't know, maybe three or four mentors. Um, and then I have my homies, right? My homies that I could talk to about stuff, whether it's personal or business or whatever. Um, so my squad is huge. Um, it's pretty huge. Uh, if I had to sit down and put a number to it um, or just guesstimate, I would say maybe 20, 25 folks. Um, and how often do you contact them? It's different for every single one of them. For example, I, I, my therapist is every two weeks, once every two weeks. <laughs> That's real for me, okay. <laughs> and then um, my leadership coach, I meet with her twice a year, twice a year. Uh, my business coach, once a month, one of them. Um, another one, I guess all of them is probably like once a month. Um, so it just depends on the need, right? And then I'm a coach for other people. I'm a mentor for other people. I'm an advisor for other people. And um, I meet with my client. Oh, thank you. You're so wonderful. I meet with my clients whenever they need me, right? So, and I, I, I put the onus on them. So when they need me, I'm like, hey, here's my calendar. All you got to do is go out there. And then some people are like, oh my God, you don't have another appointment until blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, I can fit you in. No worries, you know? <laughs> so it just really depends on the need and the relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I was just thinking, I, I, I'm like, I don't know if I've ever written down like who's in 
who, who I look to, but I would say I kind of roughly talk to people in my network advisory, kind of advisory connect, probably about quarterly, roughly. I feel like that's about the amount of time, you know, they're super, they're busy, we're, I'm busy. And um, I, I talk to a lot of their business owners. So over the years, I've developed really good relationships with other owners. And some of them are in very similar businesses to mine in other parts of the country. Some of them are um, to totally different businesses, but we just talk about general business uh, topics. Um, what I mentioned is when I joined a CEO group, we met every month um, and that really forced that, that cadence. When I was seeing an executive coach, it was every week for about six months because there were some, some specific things I was working towards. Now I kind of feel like I'm in a season I don't, I don't need that level of support right now. Um, but I'll probably go back to that. I like that idea of a couple times a year for a leadership coach. That's a really good idea. It kind of forces to forces you to check that in yourself. I have a personal trainer because for me, otherwise I will not be accountable to uh, moving my body. So I see my trainer at least once, try to try it two or three times a week, quite honestly. Um, and I notice that makes a big difference. So those are some of the key, I'd say the key people in, um, in my network and how often I see them. I didn't even think about my personal trainer. I'm trying to lose weight right now and he's in Detroit. So he, we have accountability sessions every morning. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> I just send him like, I really did work out today. I really did. <laughs> Great. Um, I have a question that came in. Um, <clears throat> attendee asked um, before the um, webinar, um, a couple of questions. One is um, how do you think and or show gratitude towards those people on your team. Yeah, that's a great, uh, I'll, I'll just kick it off. Um, I, I was just reading the question. I love this question. It is so individual because some, and I've asked this question to many, a mentor and advisor over the year. Again, if, I think if you're gonna create a formal program and you're really gonna go for people who go like sit on advisory boards for a living, they're going to expect to get some kind of payment, whether that's equity in your company or you're just dollars um, for how much time you're going to take from, from them. But, you know, I find a lot of people, even really experienced people, like they're very well off. It's not about the money for them. They just want to feel like they're making a difference or contributing. They're learning too, to that point about reciprocity. They like being involved in feeling it energized and excited. So it's very individual. And if you're someone that's just starting out and you don't have any money to pay advisors, I think let them let them know that. Say, you know, be very clear. This is how much time I'm going to need, whether it's quarterly or just twice a year. Hey, can I call you twice a year? You know, I find I, I get approached by a lot of, uh, I do a lot of a women entrepreneur kind of just free because I just love doing it. And I get hit up a lot by other women entrepreneurs. And um, I usually just have a conversation. I'll just say, you know, call me when you need to and people don't tend to abuse it. Um, I don't formally, you know, charge. I just do because I feel like it's the right thing to do to help other women business owners. And so I think when people come to me with very specific requests or they email me with very specific questions, that helps me be more efficient. So if you have something you want to ask someone, send it to them. And more likely than not, they're going to respond or if they don't have time, they might refer you to someone else. Um, and I think just a simple thank you, like, for me and, and my other, I, I just love when people come back to me and say, thank you, I took your advice and I did this, right? There's nothing better than feeling like, you, you know, someone actually listened and you made a difference. And I think the same when I, I try to really take time to just send an email. You remember that comment you made to me a while ago? You know, I was thinking about it and here's what I did. And they're just like, thank you so much. You know, you could send flowers. I just did that recently to, to a mentor of mine just to say like, Thank you so much. I hope these flowers brighten your day. You're, you know, you always brighten my life or something like that, right? So little things, little things go a long way. I think can go a long way. Totally agree with uh, Lisa. I will say this, um, when you're in that stage where you're getting, where you're building the relationship, that is where it's really important to understand what's your love language? How can I express to you that I appreciate you and love you. Like for me, words of affirmation are just high up there for me, right? Uh, outside of, you know, taking me on a trip or something. But um, <laughs> just a simple thank you card speaks life to me. You don't have to buy me a gift or, or you know, um, any acts of service. But in my office, I have a, I have a post on my LinkedIn. In my office, I have a whole credenza full of thank you cards. 
because that speaks volumes to me, right? And so knowing your, your relationships, the folks in your squad, what's important to them? Maybe it is a gift, right? I was in Costa Rica last week and I sent a lot of postcards and I bought you know, some things that some people may feel good about and other people, they just wanna see the pictures that I took there. Like that's enough for them. But um, rewards, super duper important and not always monetary. So when you think about rewarding the people in your, on your squad, it could be as simple as, you know what, I really appreciate you. A shout out on social media. Folks really appreciate that, right? Just anything like that, it could be simple. So don't think like, oh my God, I gotta buy them a new car every time they do something amazing for me. Yeah, no, you know, not only are they not expecting that, but you're gonna be real broke real soon. So, <laughs> so just reward people according to how they experience love, whatever their love language is. Thank you. Well, we are at, uh, at a time and we're not, we, we're not gonna be able to answer all the questions, but before I, I turn it back to Terrence, uh, I, I just wanna thank you, Lisa and Jennifer Ness, uh, you know, this space and learning from, from both of you. Uh, it's been an amazing time. So thank you both for your time and, and Terrence, take it away. Yeah, I uh, just wanna reiterate, uh, thanks to uh, Jose, Lisa and Jennifer Ness for their time, just a few quick takeaways and I'll send these out with the um, post event email. Uh, remember that a coach is a great mirror. Um, they ask powerful questions and questions to pull out what you already know. Um, a mentor can be mutually beneficial. So you can help your mentor and your mentor can help you. Um, to quote Jennifer Ness, self-care is sanity, not vanity. Um, always remember seasonality um, with your team. You don't have to have everybody on your team um, communicating with them all the time. Um, also, another quote from Jennifer Ness, uh, your squad is for a reason, season, and or a lifetime. Um, be intentional about uh, who you reach out to. Um, think about energy. And then finally, um, set expectations um, for the relationship. So with that, um, I would like to thank um, once again, um, Jen from um, Business Health Trust and Business Health Trust for their sponsorship. Also to um, Advanced Professionals and for Mira. And finally, just wanna remind you, this is the um, first session of three of our Elevate Northwest Conference. Next week, we'll be having a session on maximizing your virtual ne network. May 13th, um, our mastermind group, which is a peer-to-peer -peer problem solving activity. And then finally on May 20th, um, our keynote conversation between the chambers, president and CEO, Rachel Smith, and um, Doug, Doug Baldwin Jr., um, Seattle Seahawk legend. Um, that'll be on May 20th. So um, thank you all for um, taking some time for joining us today and um, go out there and enjoy the sun and have a great rest of the week. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Thanks, Terrence, Jose, and Jennifer Ness. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yes, thank you.